Greetings. Welcome to the Kingdom Culture Center. Yours truly, W.R. Lucci, residing. On well, today, we're going to talk about life in the kingdom. And that's going to be, sound funny to religious people. Why I say that is because they visualize kingdom uh, on earth and you're walking in the kingdom. Well, in essence, you really are. When you have the Holy Spirit in your life, you're walking and you are a kingdom citizen. Now, I understand many of uh, individuals call themselves uh, Christian. Christian is a religious term, and it's a man-made term. Kingdom citizen, in other words, is showing participation in the government of God. Remember, uh, membership in the kingdom is no membership. That's a religious status. But citizenship means that you are a citizen of the kingdom government. Thank you. Now, I want to talk to you about today, even though the subject is kingdom lifestyle, dealing with that. Those of us who live by his word, and uh, I want you to understand this one thing. I want to get this thing, this thought out of your mind and in one thought out of your mind and one thought into your mind. And it's all dealing with a kingdom mindset. You know, there's a time in your life when you will you will have to elevate your faith. And I've heard so many people say in times past that God used doctors to heal you. And God, that's why he used doctors to heal you. And, you know, that's <laughs> for those who are not fulfilling the faith in the king. That's why you wind up going to the doctor. I've been there. I've done that. I've had surgery at my younger age on both of my shoulders and my knees. And the Lord wants you to elevate that. You've been what you call a believer for years, and yet you really haven't elevated. You depend on the doctor. You depend on other things to provide you for your needs, other people to provide for your needs. But it's time for you now, to put it bluntly, to grow up. It's time for you to grow up. You see, because Jesus' whole operation was about faith. His whole operation was about faith in his father. Now, I don't know how to tell you this, so let me explain it to you in a way that you can understand it. When you are not at the level of faith in God, and I'm not talking about those in the world, I'm talking about those who believe the Lord Jesus Christ, who believe the Father can heal, who knows the Father, who, 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 who trusts the Father to heal them. He don't need a second opinion. He don't need someone to assist him. Now, let us go to... Uh, category so you can understand when Jesus healed people he did it through their faith and he made the statement by your faith one incident he told the man the centurion you know uh, your faith has made you whole and that's due to the fact that 
Your faith is a, excuse me, a key component to your deliverance, to your victory, and you're going to have to go through something. I'm going to give you an example. I've said this on numerous times, and I'm going to say it again. My hand, my right hand, I couldn't be, it, I couldn't open it. I had to open it with the other hand. One day I went to the doctor, and the doctor told me he would have to cut my hand because diabetics had that problem, and he cut my hand, opened it, and, and then after whatever he said he's going to do to it, then it worked. And I looked at him, and I said, good luck with that. I know the one who healed me, and I'm going to him. Now, he thought I was being religious. No, I just trust my father. See, the world don't understand that. And a lot of quote-unquote Christians don't understand that. It's all right for them to go to church and, and be to church on Wednesday and be in church on Sunday. Friday and, 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 and do their little community work and they think all oh, that's well and good. Well, it's not well and good. Your faith is to trust the Lord and believe him for every ounce of your being. I used to trust in doctors. Uh, not no more. And I've grown. Now, don't get me wrong. I didn't come about this overnight. I had to detox myself with the word to get to that point where I can stand up and say that when the doctor says, well, we're not going to take you because you, you won't wear a mask. You're not treating you. Well, I just said, good luck with that. And I walked out. The Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. One doctor told me that I, I would have bad problems and, 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 and my kidneys would fail on me, but I'm all good. I'm all good. Don't get carried away by what the man say. Stay in the word and learn to build your faith on God's word. It's very important for you to do that. Build your faith in God's word. You don't have to go to a miracle healer, a famous preacher. No. Build your faith on in God's word, when Jesus followed the man Jesus throughout Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, follow him. You say you'll see whatever he did, he did with the act of one believing in his father, believing in his word. It was their faith that delivered them. Understand that. Because without faith, you're nothing. Many of you want to believe faith for things, for objects, for people, but learn to live by that. Learn to live by your faith in his word. I can't emphasize that enough. Trust me, we have famous authors, religious authors, and all that. Learn to trust his word. Stay in his word. I emphasize that. Stay in his word. Embrace it. You're not a religious person. You're a kingdom citizen. His laws, his edicts, all of these things come when you obey his word. Healing will pursue you. Finance will pursue you, but trust in his word. He's king. You know, I look at Facebook and things that go on on Facebook and many people, and they complain about this and that and complain about this. And, and these same people claim to know the Lord, claim to believe in That's not going to work. That's not going to work at all. You're going to have to stand up, again, I emphasize, on his word. Now, another thing I want to say here is that being that you are a citizen of the kingdom, who do you represent? 
Well, you represent a number of people. Understand what it means to be a citizen. You must represent as an ambassador. Now, an ambassador doesn't get involved with the things of the country that the embassy is in. They don't. They stay focused. That's why I constantly stay with the word on our kingdom website. I don't get involved with the world system. You don't ever hear me talking about riots and anything like that and what's not. I stay with the word. That's what my father have had me to do. He appointed me for this purpose. He gave me this assignment. You don't need to hear about anything else. You hear nothing about the things of the world. What you need to do is know what the king wants for your life. When you represent, you represent him. Don't show fear. You could have fear. It's going to come and attack you. But you have to grow to the level of faith. And that's through his word. I'm going to repeat that. You have to grow to the level of faith by reading and studying his word. And the Holy Spirit will take you higher in every aspect. The governor will lead you. He will let you know where you are in him. You know, there's sometimes I was at one point in time in my life, I was going through so much pain that I just told the Lord, Lord, look, I'm ready to leave here, you know, take care of my wife. You know, I, 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 I couldn't live it. But one day, I'm going to tell you what happened. I learned to trust in him more. I learned to trust in him more. When the doctor refused to take uh, to treat me, wanted to treat me, I learned. And I was embarrassed. And why I was embarrassed? Because here's a man, me, myself, teaching others how to trust in the Lord. And I have a problem, and I'm trusting in mankind. Well, that stopped. God knew my heart. And I asked him, heal my body. I asked them, heal my body. My wife can, see, I, I have people around me who can test, attest to that. My son, my wife. And I said, hey, one day I went to bed and woke up. I had no more pain. No more pain. And I was embarrassed to know that I was whining within myself and allowing myself to get annoyed with physicians when I supposed to trust in him. And that's what I'm doing. I don't have a pain in my body. You see, if the Lord wants you to be here and you got an assignment, you got a purpose, trust me, you're invincible until he's ready to take you home. You're invincible. I said it, you're invincible. I was going through and I was in pain and an assignment and a purpose and I was getting emails and people from around the world and answering there. And one day I got tired of the pain. And I remember what Jesus says, you have not because you ask not. I asked him to heal my body. I, I seemed like I just couldn't take it no more. And he did just that. I thank the father every day of my life, being good to me, sparing my life. People around this country, around this world, they see the website. It's amazing. I never knew that the website that the Father had given me could touch so many people. My purpose is for you to embrace the Word of God, the kingdom, by faith, not just faith enough to go to church, any individual can go to church. No, it's not about that. I haven't attended a religious service, and I don't attend it, and don't plan to, unless he wants me to speak to one. But many people don't know what the kingdom is. They don't know what the kingdom message is. Unless you live it, unless your faith is built upon his word, they're not going to know what the faith in the kingdom is. Kingdom citizen, government, they're not going to know. 
You have to exhibit that in your life. When you speak, you have to speak power to your life. And don't, don't, I, I don't want you to get in that thing you speak righteous and, and speak this in your life and speak that. You have to live it. This is not a one shot deal. You get shot with a, with a, with a syringe and you, all of a sudden, no, you have to live it. You have to trust God's word. And I keep emphasizing his faith. You want to build your faith? Stay in his word. Get hungry. When you get hungry, get an appetite for the kingdom message, there's nothing that's going to stop you. You have to get an appetite. It's one thing to be hungry. You eat anything when you're hungry. But when you get an appetite, you want a certain thing that you want to eat to consume. You get an appetite for lobster. You get an appetite for scallops. That's what's going to fulfill that. You have an appetite for it. Nothing else. You know, to give you an example of what that means, if you get hungry for the word, it's one thing to read the scripture and to study it. But if you get a hungry and you want to build your faith and you get an appetite for faith, you will stay in this until you come to it. Now, I'm going to share something with you. This morning, my wife said something to me. She said, honey, I want the Holy Spirit gave me to say this. She said, this has been on my heart. And she mentioned, let's go to Matthew 6. And 33. I'm going to read something to you. And I want you to follow me and listen very clearly. Because I'm going to be as precise as I can be. Matthew 6 and 33. But seek first the kingdom of God. The operative word was first, and his righteousness, and all things shall be added to you. The question is, when my wife was asking me, see, first, okay, the righteousness, the kingdom, and his righteousness, and all things shall be added. First, the kingdom. Second, righteousness. Why? Because you cannot do right without the right thing in you. Think about that. As simple as that may seem, it's the kingdom, it's the power of the Holy Spirit residing in your mortal body that you have acquired through the gift of God, through the studying and meditating on his word. That's very important. You can't do it. So you have to seek first the kingdom. Not do right first, because that's not going to right. If you try doing right, you're going to be doing it under your own energy on your own motivation. But when you seek the kingdom, his government that comes residing in you, which is the Holy Spirit, the governor, he says, all things shall be added to you. Righteousness. When you get the kingdom, you have his, what is righteousness? His word, his spirit that resides in you. You're not going to get caught up in all these other things. I see so many, and I'm going to use this term Christian. So many Christians. Christian gospel. I saw something the other day in which I'm tired of looking at it through Facebook. They said, the American gospel. What's the American gospel? That's religion. 
what they have recalled Christianity. But the kingdom of God is God's government that resides in you. His Holy Spirit, the governor. You have victory. You'll be guided. He'll keep you in the midst of trouble and turmoil. This is power. The Holy Spirit is power, is guidance, and he will lead you to higher heights and build your faith in him. Understand that. Once again, first, the kingdom, then righteousness. He didn't say righteousness first, then the kingdom. He didn't say do right. Forget that. You can't do right on your own source because you're going to fall down on it. The minute anything gets wrong, something go wrong, you're going to fall back. You're going to give it up. But if you trust in his word, his word is the key. His word is the key. Stay in his word. One writer said, his word has I hidden my heart that I might not sin against you, Father. That's why you got to embrace that word. Until next time, you have a nice day. Remember this one thing. Your faith is your greatest asset in the kingdom of God.